What a night it was a fortnight ago when the Chippewas in comeback overtime fashion defeated Michigan State for the first time in quite some time right here at Martin Ice Arena. They then went into East Lansing the very next night and trounced them 4 to 1 on Martin or on Mun Ice Arena ice. Tonight they turned their attention to one of the two teams they beat last season in the Bowling Green Falcons. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome inside Martin Ice Arena in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, inside the broadcast booth. My name is Reagan Cleaves, alongside Matthew Ryder, and we are happy to have you along here tonight as the Chippewas and Falcons battle it out in the first of a two-game weekend set that'll happen right here on CCHN. Well, Matt, last week, or two weekends ago, rather, Central Michigan had a wonderful performance against Michigan State, beating them 3-2 on opening night before coming back the following night and trouncing them 4-1 on, uh, on uh, Michigan State's ice. That's a win they can feel proud about, no doubt, but how do they focus on the game and keep from getting too complacent here tonight. Well, it's been two weeks since they played against State, and they need to uh, continue with their identity, which is defense. Okay, they gave up two goals in the first game and uh, one goal in the second game. So defense is their identity, but they also have a lot of good players on offense with Zoe Saudi, Del Rey, and Brooke Hubert with scoring goals, and they're hoping to be an offensive threat tonight. Um, Thank you very much, yeah. Matt. We'll take a look. Speaking of that 4-1 to victory at Munn, we'll take a look at that right now. C Central Michigan, uh, Matt, got things started off pretty darn quickly with two goals in that opening period with Saudi and Del Rey lighting the lamp. Yeah, Saudi uh, had a goal from a tremendous assist from Del Rey, putting her body on the line and making that play um, to make it 1-0 in the uh, first period. In the second period, Del Rey had a breakaway from a pass from Saudi. Um, and going into the second period, um, Hubert, who had the um, game-winning goal and the overtime win in the opener, um, had her second goal of the season, um, which made it 3-0. Um, and then CMU, or MSU, um, Lindsey Rice scored the first goal for MSU. Um, this was due to CMU being careless with the puck and uh, not being efficient on offense. And... Um, so that made it three to one. And then uh, the captain, Matt Bar Mac Barnett, um, with a couple minutes left in the third, notched the fourth goal of the game, and that sealed it to make it four to one for the Chippewas. Yeah, a bit of a Paul Korea moment there for Matt Barnett, getting injured at the end of the second period, coming out and scoring a big goal for Central Michigan. That would end up being their fourth goal of the night, the second insurance goal for the Central Michigan captain, and that led them to a victory 4-1 over Michigan State, putting them at 2-0. That 2-0 record sees them at the top of the CCWHA to entering week three of play. They are tied with Adrian for that top spot. Both teams have 2-0 records. Miami and Notre Dame uh, come in at tied for third, both with 1-1 one one records. Loyola of Chicago and, and Sioux College have not played. They sit at they sit tied for fifth. Bowling Green comes in at number seven, zero oh, and one on the campaign. MSU and Northern Michigan, traditional powerhouses in the CCWHA, find themselves at the bottom of the standings to start this year at zero oh, and two. Matt, how about you give us a look, uh, more detailed look at these two teams here tonight? Well, CMU is two and zero, oh, uh, first time sweeping MSU in a long time. Bowling Green zero oh, and one for the season, lost to Pittsburgh in the opening game, seven to four. Um, looking to have a breakout year after a 3-18 and season. Um, similar to CMU, CMU had four wins last season. Both teams trying to implement um, the program and trying to get it back on track uh, for future generations and future seasons to come. Yeah, both these two teams managed to beat each other last season. Central Michigan getting the best of Bowling Green in a in, in a three-game season series. Two games here at Martin, or pardon me, two games uh, at Slater Ice Arena down in Bowling Green, and one game here at Martin. Uh, Central Michigan won two of those. Bowling Green won uh, just one of those contests. Uh, taking a look at scratches tonight. 
for Central Michigan. Uh, Tegan Perry is out for, cent uh, for CMU. She is the only scratch on either roster here tonight. Now we'll take a look at our players to watch. For Central Michigan, we got Caitlin Williams, who through uh, two games hasn't tallied a point yet, but she has been all over the ice for Central Michigan. She was uh, she was creating a bunch of chances, especially at Munn uh, in that second game against Michigan State. We'll see what she can do here tonight. And uh, the second player to watch for CMU is Zoe Saudi, the leading goal scorer for Central Michigan. Both of her goals on the campaign have been the first goals in the, in, uh, in the game for CMU and overall in the game in general. So she, with three points, is the leading scorer for CMU. Matt, uh, give us a look at Bowling Green's players to watch. For Bowling Green, um, Devin Marshall, who's a senior this year, is, was tied in goals um, on the team from last season. Um, and also Brianna Oliphant, she was tied second in points and second in goals and assists uh, junior this year. So both want to uh, make a big impact coming into this season, hoping to um, win more games. Indeed, now that'll lead us to our keys to the game uh, for CMU. Uh, Matt, the first one you have is build off momentum from last weekend. Yes, they played, uh, they're really good against MSU, um, uh, ending with four, one, four to one in the last game. Um, so that's huge momentum. We haven't beat MSU in a long time starting off the season 2-0, and so we have a lot of positives to um, go into this game um, in this series. Um, so, But two things, like I said in the beginning, too, that they need to improve on is the power play. So they're 2 for 8 at MSU, um, so they, with those opportunities, they need to cash in, move the puck, and put the puck in the goal. Um, and then breakaways. They had a lot of breakaways, and they didn't um, capitalize on, on those opportunities, having the defense um, take advantage of that. So both of those things they need to work on in order to be successful in this game. That will lead us to our light the lamp game here. Uh, Derek is not here, but he is in the lead with five points, three of them coming with, uh, in their last game against Michigan State. And uh, Matt, he beat you last game, so you had the first pick. I have the first pick, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy with my pick, Zoe Saudi. So she's had a goal in every game this season, the first two games, and... Um, it was the first goal of each of those two games, too. So I'm hoping she'll notch a goal to start off the game here or at least get one um, to get things started. So I'm confident in her um, to do that tonight. And Derek went with Kylie Del Rey here tonight. Matt, how would you tell us a little bit more about Derek's pick? Derek's pick is a great pick. Del Rey's been all over the ice um, offensively um, as well as defensively. But she's been uh, getting the puck to her different teammates, um, put putting an all-out out effort out there and, um, and scoring goals, too. So that's a great pick. She's definitely going to make a huge impact on the game tonight. Indeed. And uh, speaking of impacts on the game, one of the biggest impacts that any team can have is their coach behind the bench. And, Matthew, you earlier this week sat down with Coach Haney to talk about this matchup against Bowling Green this weekend. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing is uh, he's happy that he's able to start uh, the season 2-0. Um, in a 16-game regular season. Um, season, um, But in practices, they, he kept on preaching the breakaways and the power plays, take advantage of those opportunities. Um, so they were focusing on different plays that they can implement during the game. And um, he's also, he also mentioned, uh, gave high praise to Coach Mike. Um, he's trying to put the same philosophy with the Bowie Green um, just, this is their second season, so trying to get to the team to go on the right path and uh, have a successful season just like CMU. And that'll do it for our pregame show. We'll step aside, but we're back with more in a moment here on CCHN. It's the Chippewas and the Falcons coming up next right here on YouTube.
Welcome back, everybody. Your starting lineup for Bowling Green, Bowling Green State, will be forward number two, Devin Marshall. Uh, defense number four, Kira Ellenberger. Center number five, Emma Wanek. Defense number fifteen, Reagan Gargak. And forward number nine, Kate McCullough. And for your Chippewas, forward Caitlin Williams, number eight. Forward, Bree Mermelock, number 10. Defense, Leah Palmer, number 11. And forward, Allison Haney, number 22. As well as forward, Brooke Hubert, number 66. For Starting tonight. net minders tonight for Central Michigan. They turn to Lauren Abraham, who has a 1-0 and record coming in with a save percentage. Uh, only allowing two goals in that last, or only allowing one, one goal in that uh, her first start against Michigan State last weekend, or two weekends ago, pardon me, and Logan Card gets the start for Bowling Green. Central Michigan will head from left to right across your radio dial, wearing their white uniforms with maroon shoulders and golden maroon trim, black helmets, maroon pants, and white socks, Laura and Abraham and Nett to our left. Bowling Green will counter from right to left, wearing those road orange jerseys with brown shoulders and white and brown trim, black pants, black socks, there are black pants, black helmets, and orange socks. Puck is dropped at center ice. We are underway here from Martin Ice Arena. Allison Haney, starting defenseman for Central Michigan, trying to clear that from her own zone. Look out, here's McAuliffe. She had the puck knocked off of her stick. And here comes CMU back the other way. Up the left wing, Caitlin Williams chases the loose puck into the offensive end. She was beaten to it by the Falcons, but a clearing attempt is knocked away now look at it three on two here's Devin Marshall over the line left side Marshall into the corner throws it out in front and it's cut off there by Bree Mermelik Palmer up ahead to Williams look out loose puck in the right circle Williams with a backhander and that one goes wide oh look out coming in there was Mac Barnett she took a spill and that'll lead to the puck trickling all the way back into the central Michigan end 50 seconds gone here in the opening period CMU and Bowling Green starting off this weekend series. Now look out, puck free at the side of the net. It pops up in the air. And clearing attempt is intercepted and a shot. Blocked away there. Zoe Saudi with the opportunity from the mid-slot. Declan Whitus in the far corner. Lost the puck. She gets it back along the half wall before shoveling it down low. Puck comes free into the slot, and Bowling Green clears it out, and down the ice, Mac Barnett back there to scoop up the puck for CMU. Her pass was intercepted, in the Falcons pass in front. Karim up into the air, and is free into the right, into the left corner. Thrown out in front, intercepted there by Gabriella Nixon, and that'll start the CMU breakout left to right. Very back and forth action, here to start this first period. Puck free along the half wall. Barnett couldn't keep it in. She gave it away. Here comes Bowling Green. It was just too far for the Falcons. Now here's Palmer over the line with a shot. Kicked away there by Logan Card. Puck free at the left point. Swooping in there is Grace Leotino. Was along the far half wall, scooping it around to the near side. Voitas into the right corner to pick it up for CMU. Lost it though, and it's cleared the length of the ice. Now look out, working behind the defense. There's a shot and a save by Abraham. Good first test there for Abraham. Bowling Green putting the pressure on CMU here early. Regan Gargak at the right point, kept the puck in, and the Chippewas clear it out. Here's Kiara Ellenberg. Back at her own line. Threw it out to center ice where Devin Marshall picked it up. She circles back into her, into her own end. Drops it off for Ellenberger. Ellenberger's pass ahead was knocked away from Wynek. Now over the line. Here come the Chippewas with a shot. And a save there by Card for the first stoppage of play in this hockey game. Yeah, it's, uh, there's been two shots on, on each end here uh, for the Chippewas and Bowling Green. Um, Mac Barnett is heading to the locker room. She looks frustrated, don't know what's going on there. She didn't look to be injured, my guess is an equipment malfunction, maybe something with her skate. We'll see if she comes out in any relative speed. 
Here's Williams behind the net here for CMU and down in the bowling green end to our right. Williams will work up the half wall, pressured there by a couple of defensemen from Bowling Green. Oidas works the puck free behind the goal, and it's rimmed around to the near side. Loose puck along the half wall. CMU gets to it, throwing it out in front. Look out, here's Williams in all alone, and her shot was turned aside there by Card. Clearing attempt, knocked down by Oidas at the left point. She'll bounce it off the wall and get it back though. Thrown out in front. Caromed up high, and the Falcons here try to get it out. Here's Devin Marshall charging right to left. And over the line, cuts into the left circle. Goes to her backhand, behind the net. Good work there by Kylie Del Rey to work the puck free. Mermelik battling along the half wall with Castiglione. And Hubert. Castiglione comes away with the puck. She'll work behind the goal. Send it across defensively for Leah Palmer. Chippewas are able to get it out to center here with 15.38 to go in the opening frame. Tied in a scoreless bout here through the first five minutes of this hockey game. Over the line, here's Nixon right wing. Chases the loose puck into the corner, threw it out in front of the backhand. It was intercepted, but it, be it comes loose once more. Reaching for it there is Saudi. She gets it, tries to throw it out in front. It was intercepted off, the, off of a leg. Now here's Palmer over the line. Lost the puck. It was worked free there by Del Rey, but her pass was just too far for her intended target and goes into the right corner. Two on two battle there. Orange and white sweaters go at it. And it is eventually worked free and a penalty is gonna come up here to Bowling Green. There goes Abraham, but she won't get to the bench in time and we'll have the first power play of the evening for Central Michigan. Yeah, Kyle De Kylie Del Rey took a trip in the corner over there, um, but got right back up, and that, that looks like that's gonna be why we have a penalty. It'll be Jenna, M Jenna Mueller to the box for a trip. At 5.08 of this opening period, so CMU on the power play for the first time tonight. They were two for eight in that Michigan State Series. Now Central Michigan wins the offensive draw. Good keep there by Palmer at the left point. The pass was intercepted. Now look out, a shorthanded opportunity here for the Falcons. They bump it into the offensive end and Palmer going to the boards with the Falcons. Good angling work there by Palmer to keep her opponent off. Great and out of the way. Now a good pass ahead. Look out. Here's Del Rey behind the defense. Working in and a shot saved by Card. Great opportunity there for CMU on the power play. Speaking of which, a 120 left in the man advantage. Puck is tied up across the way. Stick came free from the, bowl, from the Falcons forward in the far corner. Castiglione takes it and rims it around the boards. Mac Barnett waiting. At the ice entry door to our right to come back on. Looks like nothing major made her go to the locker room. Now here's Brooke Hubert working the puck free into the offensive end. She'll slide it to the near side for Williams. Williams puts on the brakes. Working up the half wall near side. Holds at the top of the circle. Splits the defense into the slot hole. She tried to split the wickets of Marshall. And that didn't work as it led to a turnover. And the Falcons dumping it down the ice with 35 to go on the power play. This, was. this is one of the main reasons uh, what they wanted to focus on is try to get a goal in the power play. So 30 seconds left. It's been a frustrating power play thus far for CMU. Haven't been able to set up much in the offensive end. They have one or two shots on this power play. That's maybe it. Now a pass ahead. Here to Leotino, Le she'll work in with a shot, a soft shot on card. It was gloved away in the loose puck as a shot from Palmer came from the right point. And it caromed around to the offensive end. Bowling Green's back to full strength. Look out, Castellini under the shot. It was blocked to the near side. Here is Gabriella Nixon. Along the boards, cutting into the slot, lost the puck. It comes free to the far side. Caparelli in there for Bowling Green. She worked the puck free and has a shot from the point. Thereby Palmer was blocked away. Puck comes free to the far side, chasing it after it is Oliphant. 
On a font for Bowling Green, works the puck into the slot. Kept in, here's Cassioni, fan on the wrist shot from the high slot, but good jump to poke it away. Here's Nixon once more from the slot, taken down, and here comes Bowling Green in a 2-1-2. Oliphant over the line, right side, slides it to the near side. A shot, great block there by Castiani. Eight minutes gone here in the opening frame. Saudi slides it across. Look out, here comes Del Rey, and she's hauled down from behind. Interesting no call from the referees there. Buck is intercepted to the point there. Good keep by Allison Haney. Puck comes free to the left corner. Leotino in there for CMU. She blocks the clearing attempt and another shovel pass is kept in there by Haney. She'll take it to the left point and go off for a change after dumping it in around behind the goal. Leotino holds it, slides it up top for, Wo for Woitis. Woitis holds at the right point, throws it down low. Karam's off the corner boards. Thrown out in front and into Bowling Green's hands after a ricochet. Here they come. Here's Schick over the line. Oh, she's Ooh. taken down. That's going to be a penalty. And Schick is down, holding her head. Oh, no. And it's going to be a body check here on Declan Whitus. Yeah. You got to get somebody out there. Schick has not moved, and they're calling for somebody. She is holding her head, and that's not good. So, coach is coming out to check on Schick. We'll step aside with this injury timeout. You're watching Central Michigan University Club Hockey on the CMU Club Hockey Network.
As we're back here inside Martin Ice Arena, Morgan Schick has gotten to her feet. She was on the ground for quite a while, about a couple of minutes, and it's good to see her back up. What do you see on yeah, that play, Matt? It just seemed like a simple check, and I think she just landed. We're thinking maybe, you know, we're not sure what it is, but. Very good to see Schick up and helped by teammates making her way off the ice. You think she can't return after this, and she's most certainly out for the rest of the contest. It's good to see both teams uh, showing their support, tapping their sticks on the boards. Schick is going to the going to bench very still. I don't think she moved a skate. Yeah. After that, and Mac Barnett helping uh, the trainer get back to the Bowling Green bench. It's going to be a two-minute minor for a body check on Declan Wojtas. Uh, after that, 11.04 remaining here in the opening period. We are scoreless here through the first eight minutes and 56 seconds. And Bowling Green players still huddle around their bench. Uh, checking in on Morgan Schick. Thus far, it's been a pretty even contest between these two teams. Uh, CMU and Bowling Green both having their good chances in the in, in their respective offensive ends, but it's really been a defensive game thus far. Yeah, uh, good amount of um, defensive stops um, and same amount of shots on each side. So I'm, we're going to continue to see the offense um, still thrive on both sides and and the defense do their thing. Indeed, I'm surprised they they didn't take Schick off the ice immediately, especially with how long she was down. She was holding the back of her head when she hit when when play was stopped, and she stayed like that for a couple of minutes. Again, thoughts and prayers with Bowling Green and Schick, and she's going to head to the penalty box and probably head off. Well, She's just going to stay in the penalty box there, get some separation from her teammates so the doctor can check on her. And again, we hope she's okay. And yeah, Bowling Green needs to focus back on the game. They're, they're hoping their teammate will get better, and, and hopefully it's nothing too major. But they have a game to play, and hopefully they'll be playing for their teammate. It's one of the hardest things to do after seeing a teammate go down like that is continue to play. It's, it's always rough seeing a friend and a teammate go down. And we hope, again, we hope Schick is all right. And there's no long-term damage. Chippewas win the draw shorthanded and start up ice right side. Here's Nixon over the line. She'll cut into the shot. Oh, that one trickled through card. And CMU still has the opportunity. Here's Mac Barnett up to the left point, throws it in off the end boards. Buck is free behind the goal. 138 remaining in the power play here for Bowling Green, but right now it looks like a CMU power play with his own time. Shot saved by Card, rebound. Another shot from a sharp angle was turned aside and trying to flip it in over top of Card. There was Nixon. Good keep there at the right point. There by Zoe Saudi, but she turned it over. And here comes Alifan over the left side. She lost the puck. It squirts free into the slot. And it's worked across the way by Devin Marshall. Marshall turned it over, though, and the Chippewas with 67 seconds to go on the power or on the penalty kill. Clear it down the ice. We are halfway through this opening period here at Martin Ice Arena. CMU and Bowling Green deadlocked at one. This is going to go for icing against the Falcons here on this power play with 54 seconds to go. It's good to see CMU getting um, a lot more shots um, on the BG's goalie. And um, but fans, don't forget that the CMU Club Hockey Network YouTube channel is your one-stop shop for highlights, exclusive interviews, and full game broadcasts for CMU Women's D2 and Men's D3 Hockey. Make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications so as to never miss a moment of Chippewa Hockey. Just go to the YouTube and search CMU Club Hockey Network to find the channel. Chippewas once again have possession here on the penalty kill. It looks like a CMU power play when it's in fact the opposite lookout. A shot from a tight angle goes up and out of play. A great opportunity there for Kylie Del Rey from in tight. She got too much elevation on it and it ended up 
going into the netting and out of play. Referee's rule, it went off of Logan Card, however, so the draw will stay in the offensive end for CMU. 40 seconds to go on that penalty kill. Draw to the left of Card, won by Bowling Green. They'll try to get out here, but look out, their pass was intercepted by Williams. Williams over the line left side, works down into the corner, puts on the brakes with a good move. She's to the top of the left circle, drops it off for Haney. Haney with a shot, oh, that caught Card by surprise at the side of the net. Around the boards, guess who's there? It's Caitlin Williams. She backhands it out in front, Palmer steps in from the point. She picks up the loose puck, goes to the left point. Her shot was blocked, oh, going down there was, Cap was Caparelli. Williams backhands it up top. Left point for Palmer. She'll let a shot go blocked away. Look out, CMU. Haney, shot save. And the rebound, they score! Just as time expires on the penalty kill, CMU strikes first with 8.58 to go in the opening frame. Allison Haney with that goal. First one of the season. That puck was all over the crease, and Allison Haney saw an opportunity and with a, a bunch of players in the crease, uh, found the promised land and scored that goal. I don't know if she's credited with an assist on that one, but Caitlin Williams keeping play alive multiple times inside the zone for CMU. It should be credited at least with an effort. They're an honorary assist with how well she kept that puck alive multiple times on that penalty kill. Yeah, Caitlin Williams is like a magician out there. She's just like handling that puck. Her captain, Mac Burnett, said she has hands and she's just feeding it to her teammates and she doesn't give enough credit, get enough credit of how well she's implementing the offense here. CMU back into the offensive end, looking to keep the pedal to the floor against these Falcons. Pucks poked out to neutral ice and after it's McCullough. McAuliffe was beaten to the puck by Castiglione. And over the line, here's McAuliffe once more. Shot from the top of the right circle, goes into the near corner. Back on it, here is, here is the Chippewas defensively is a shot there from the left circle. Abraham didn't see it as it laid to the side of her crease. Chippewas are unable to get it out again as Mermeluk took a spill into the boards. Now look out, here's Williams. Williams lost the puck, it comes free into the corner. She's back on it. Williams all over the ice. Here in the first three games of this season, look out, a shot from the slot was knocked away. And the Falcons are back on it. Puck kept in the line though by Palmer. She'll step in with a shot, deflected out in front. There by Foster and it goes behind the goal. Puck comes free out to neutral ice. Leah Palmer retreating back to her own blue line. Slides it across to her captain, Barnett. Barnett works it up the boards. Intercepted there by McAuliffe, who throws it in. And Palmer takes it once more. Stretch pass out ahead to Mario Wilson. Puck was too far for her. 7.02 to go here in the opening period. CMU up 1-0 off of a Allison Haney goal. Look out, CMU, here's Simbro in. Her shot was denied. Rebound is thrown on goal, and Card holds on to it. And she's bumped into there by Declan Whitus. And we'll have a stoppage of play as Card hold on, holds on. CMU being very aggressive on offense is very great to see. Um, they ha definitely have a lot of offensive weapons. And the captains, Emily and Mac, they were saying um, they're trying to implement their offense, see who's going to be in the right positions um, when they set up their offense. So you can see what's happening here. Shot from the left point, deflected out in front of Card, rebound side of the net. They jam away at it, it's still free. Now another shot, they score! Two goals in a matter of a couple of minutes. And CMU, it's number 13, Kylie Del Rey, putting on the shot from, the t from an in tight angle, and they're up by two. Woo, Kylie Del Rey with the response. She's been all over the ice, very aggressive, and she finds the promised land by notching it in. I think her third goal of the season. And she is a real playmaker for these Chippewas. And way to pick the top corner there by Del Rey. 
as she was only about five feet out from the crease when she let that shot go. Oh, look out, here comes the Falcons the other way in a three on oh. Here's Whaley, sends it across, a shot, save Abraham, and the rebound was denied. Great save there by the Central Michigan netminder. Now another chance for the Falcons. They cannot get it out in front, and the Chippewas clear up right wing. Here's Zoe Saudi over the line. Saudi into the circle, back door, and it couldn't be held onto there by Barnett. Falcons get it the length of the ice. Icing should be the call, and it is with 5.53 to go here in the first. Wow, what I've been seeing is Del Rey and Saudi, they have a great connection. In the state game, they, all, they each had assists and goals feeding off of each other, and this is, you saw that play going down the line there. Saudi saw Del Rey coming across the rink, and um, she couldn't find it, but she's getting opportunities and they have a great connection on this offense. Lots of offensive production here for CMU through, this op through the opening couple of games. Now look out, oh, a quick shot off the draw out in front. Brooke Hubert trying to get her second of the year. Puck is free behind the goal. CMU still has it. They throw it out in front, and the backhand was denied there by Card. What a save there, denying Bree Mermelek out in front. Well, BG's goalie is definitely getting a lot of action, and the offense of the Chippewas are letting her know that they came to play tonight, and they're ready to keep shooting at her and trying to get some goals. Off the draw, puck is free in the slot. Oh, and that one just went off the left pad there of Card. Bowling Green has the puck. Wow, Morgan Schick is back out on the ice. Good to see her at least well enough to continue playing. Unbelievable. Good to know that she wasn't seriously injured after that hit in the corner. 5-10 to go in the opening period. Her Schick throwing it out in front. Good stick work there by Laura Abraham to knock the puck free, and she makes a second opportunity save. They're on Oliphant with 5.02 to go. Fans, stay with us for the first intermission report after uh, the next five minutes and two seconds of game time. Matthew Ryder will have the animation report for you, take you through a recap of the first period, and then take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard for the ACHA and the rest of Chippewa Hockey and Chippewa Athletics. Here's Oliphant at the right point after keeping it in, slides it across, shot saved by Abraham as she sticked it away, and Leah Palmer takes it, trying to clear it, and she was uh, uh, unable to keep it in at the right point. There were the Falcons. Now a pass is thrown up to the left wing, Noel Simbro couldn't hold it in her skates. It's sent to the near side. Back in the Chippewa end with 4.35 to go. Wilson couldn't hold it, and here's Schick. Morgan Schick goes up ice. Here in a two on two, weaves to the left side. Backhander thrown on goal. Abraham puts the right pad down as well as the stick and holds on with 4.19 to go. Well, Reagan, you mentioned Morgan Snick. She's back out there, and she looks like she looks good and healthy, and she's wanting to get that goal in right there across Abraham, but Abraham made that stop. But maybe she's just trying to get on the ice, see how she feels. Chippewas win the defensive zone draw and lift it up the ice. Look out in behind the defenders, Kylie Del Rey. Del Rey working in. Oh, she ripped it just high on the left side. Castiglione kept it at the left point, throws it down low. The Falcons there to get it. It's Ellenber Ellenberger behind the net. Comes free to the far half wall. Good work there by Del Rey. She'll shovel it down low. Zoe Saudi behind the goal for CMU. She finds Del Rey in the bottom of the left circle. Oh, it hopped over her stick. And the Falcons are able to get it out. Thrown up, Ice Castiglione deflected it. Icing is waved off that, thus. 3.37 to go in the opening period. CMU leads 2-0 off of goals from Haney and Del Rey. Reagan cleaves inside the broadcast booth with you here with Matthew Ryder. And Martin Ice Arena. Now look out, Del Rey dancing down the left side, lost the puck, she regains control, throws it out in front, kept in there by Mermelek at the high slot, her shot on the second opportunity went wide. Del Rey again along the half wall. She'll circle into the circle and a shot, and it's held on to there by Logan Card with 3.06 to go. Wow, Del Rey is definitely making 
her her name uh, here in this game. She is all over the place, taking shots, making great passes, always in the right spot, giving herself an opportunity to make a goal. And that is uh, Derek's pick for Light the Lamp. So she's looking good here tonight. Indeed. Here's Hubert off the draw for CMU. Works to the top of the right circle, feeds it across for Williams, a shot off the mask of guard. Good opportunity there for Williams. CMU still has the puck. Here's Hubert on the far side. Hubert will work down to the left corner, rim it around the boards to the near side. Chasing after it there is McAuliffe in the corner. McAuliffe worked it up top, kept in there by Williams. She is all over the ice here tonight. For CMU, opportunities left and right for the Central Michigan forward. Now here's Wojtas, down to the right corner, works up the wall for Williams, Williams at the right point, she'll let her wrist shot go, save, and the rebound into the far corner, 2.25 to go in the opening period. Down to the far side, Mormalek dancing in there, throws it around to the near side for Williams, Williams up top for Wojtas, her one-timer is gobbled up there by Card for the whistle with 2.15 to go. We mentioned Williams is definitely um, implementing the offense and making sure her teammates are getting that puck and she's taking a lot of great shots too. And I think she's gonna notch, notch one here um, going into the second period if she doesn't uh, in the last two minutes here. Draw will be to the left of Logan Card, the bowling green net minder. In for the draw, Central Michigan can't win it. And it's still loose, they battle for it, and it comes to the near side. Mar Mariah Wilson in after it. It comes free to the right point. Castellani kept it in. Look out. Her pass was intercepted by Morgan Schick. Schick down the left side. Cuts into the high slot. Let's a shot go. Oh, and Abraham had that squeak just under her glove. But she got away unscathed as it skittered wide of the net. Now here's Leah Palmer, the alternate captain for Central Michigan, works up the line. She'll send it across ahead for Simbro. Noah Simbro, or Noel Simbro chases it in. She feeds it out in front. And it's ricochets right back to her stick. Palmer worked it back down the wall for Simbro. They go into the corner, and Simbro's pass was intercepted with under 90 seconds to go in the opening period. Now with speed up left wing, here's Marshall for the Falcons. She cuts over the line into the circle, backhand shot and a save there by Abraham. What a save there by, C by Abraham, taking off that angle and making the save on Marshall. Abraham hasn't seen a ton of action, but she's making a lot of timely saves whenever BG is on offense. Um, but for most of this first period, it's been all CMU on the offensive side, making it two to nothing. 1.13 to go in the period. CMU wins yet another faceoff here this afternoon. They have been dominant in the faceoff circle. And here come the Chippewas, Declan White is up left wing. Lead pass ahead to Del Rey. Hopped over his stick as we've got under 60 seconds to go in the opening period here at Martin. Barnett, the captain, chases the puck back into the corner. Mack will turn and fire it up left side. Here's Del Rey. Oh, tried the toe drag. Good defensive work there by Gargak. Gargak's pass ahead was just too far from McAuliffe, but it was eventually deflected there by Barnett. 33 to go in the opening period. Castellani works it up left wing or right wing ahead to Saudi. Saudi flips it on ahead to Del Rey, but it hopped over a stick. Gargak though working at it. Now Del Rey works in and fires. And Card stands tall and it makes the save with 19 to go in the opening period. I think it's safe to say that Del Rey is going to be one of the top offensive players for the CMU Chippewas. She's definitely great at handling the puck and nonstop at shooting in the goal here tonight. She has been in the Chippewas offense here today. 17 to go as the puck is down once more. Up at the right point, Castellani keeps it in. She'll let her wrist shot go, deflect it out in front of Card. Rebound, stays out in front and they jam away at it and Card eventually is able to find it and smother the puck and will draw the whistle. Costilny had a great um, look in the corner um, to put the puck in, Just looking for her first goal of the season. Seven seconds left in the frame. They draw to uh, cards left. Nixon 
ties it up in the corner. They battle for it. Chippewa's trying to throw it out in front, but uh, play is stopped here as time has expired in the opening period. Central Michigan with two goals in a matter of about four minutes leads the way as they head into the first intermission. We'll step aside. Matthew Ryder will have the first intermission report when we come back here on CCHN. And we're back here at CCHN. What a crazy uh, first period it's been um, from, the, from both sides. <clears throat> in the beginning of the first period, it, it was uh, pretty even on the shots. Um, Bowling Green, CMU, both getting an even amount of shots and being um, solid on defense. Um, and then uh, number 10 um, for Bowling Green, Morgan Schick, took a big hit um, across the boards. Um, and we were waiting for a good five, seven minutes um, until uh, to see what was going on. And um, luckily, um, she was able to walk off on her own feet and go back to the bench. And we thought she was done for the night, but she kept coming back 
and not even not only just coming back, but coming back and taking shots on goal on Abraham um, and showing effort. And she's she's continuing um, to show that um, she wants to keep playing, and she's coming out with a, a vengeance, saying like I'm I'm still here. I'm not injured. Um, on the CMU side, offensively, um, Haney got her her first goal of the season, which is huge. Um, you could see the excitement from her teammates um, huddling over over her, um, excited to get that first goal of the season. And for the Chippewas, um, she's new to the team. And Del Rey got was the second goal of the period. Um, she's been all over the ice, um, amazing passing. Uh, making sure her teammates are getting great opportunities and be just being aggressive on offense. You could tell that she's definitely going to be one of the top um, scorers on this team. Um, and with our goalie, Abraham, she's making some timely stops. She's not getting a ton of action, but she's making timely stops when we need it. Um, just getting, bouncing off those rebounds and continuing to, to knock them down. Um, so overall, the offense has been great. Caitlin Williams being the point guard of the team, just implementing that puck to her teammates. She's fast, she's, she's going all around, and she's also taking aggressive shots. So uh, I can almost guarantee you, you're gonna get a goal from Caitlin Williams tonight. Um, and probably with a lot of more Chippewas because this offense is on fire right now. Um, Saudi, Saudi and Del Rey have a great connection um, in the MSU series. They were, um, they fed off each other with assists and goals. Um, Looking to see if Shadi can get a goal um, this game to continue the streak for number three of the season. Um, so they're going to continue this offense, hopefully. And defense, you already know they're that's where they hang their hat on. Only given up uh, th uh, three goals total on the season in the first two games. So um, we'll, we'll, it'll be a great, great second period um, between both teams. But um, Let's look around um, the CMU Athletics, um, the Out of Town scoreboard. Men's D2 versus Adrian um, tomorrow at 3.30, and Men's D3 versus Florida Gulf Coast at 5 o'clock here at Martin Ison Arena. Uh, and the ACHA Women's D2, we got Westchester at Montclair State in Little Falls, New Jersey at 9 p.m. tonight. Uh, Navy at Pitt. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at 9 p.m. Miami, Ohio at Wisconsin in Madison, Wisconsin, 9.45 p.m. And you have Rowan at Liberty in Lynchburg, Virginia at 7 p.m. With the Chippewa scoreboard, the field hockey took a 2-0 loss against the Athens today in Ohio. Uh, men's uh, cross country and women's cross country, um, they visited Bowling Green today with the Falcon invite. And for volleyball, they're at playing, uh, CMU will be playing at um, Bowling Green. Actually, they're playing right now. Um, it was, start time was at 6 o'clock, so hopefully um, CMU can uh, show Bowling Green um, who's boss uh, in, in athletics. Um, but we'll be right back for the second period here at CCHN. So see you soon.
Players are back on the ice here at Martin Ice Arena in Mount Pleasant. And we are back for the second period of play here from the Marty as Central Michigan came out strong in that first period, Matthew, and made a statement here in their second home game of the year. Boy, did they. Oh, my goodness, man. I mean, Del Rey. So we said Haney got that first goal. It was actually Del Rey. Um, so Del Rey has two on the night. Um, she came out popping, and obviously you see her. She's all over the ice making things happen on offense and on defense, and um, she definitely has a, has a chance to get player of the game for sure if it keeps going this way. But just all the players on offense are contributing, and I could see definitely more players like Saudi getting a goal here um, as well as like Brooke Hubert because those, peop those players have been doing well in the first two games, and hoping to do well here tonight. So Del Rey gets both goals, uh, one at 11.02 and the other at 13.25. At uh, Haney, who we originally thought got the goal er, uh, at 11.02, she gets the primary assist. Leah Palmer gets the secondary. And Zoe Saudi getting on the score sheet with her second with the assist on the second goal for Del Rey. That's goal number three on the campaign, aver averaging a goal per game. We'll see if she can keep it up through the rest of this season. CM, you all had right to left here in the second period, wearing those white home jerseys with maroon and gold trim. Bowling Green will head left to right, wearing those orange jerseys with brown and white trim. Buck is dropped. We are underway here in the middle frame in Mount Pleasant. Good intercept at center there by Brooke Hubert. Protects the puck to the outside, dropped it off for Williams. Williams puts on the brakes in the corner, lost the puck. She tried to kick it up top. Swooping down from the point, there was Barnett to poke to Williams, who threw it out in front. And the Falcons intercept and go back the other way. With speed up left wing, here's McAuliffe. McAuliffe dropped it, and great back check there by Williams to come in and work. Her opponent off the puck. Now here come the Chippewas. Mermeluk over the line, got knocked down. And the Falcons clear it out. 50 seconds gone in the opening period, er, pardon me, in the second period. Two nothing. Chippewas lead. Williams is gonna get off and that's gonna be too many. Which is odd even though nobody touched the puck. And it's going to be Williams to head to the box for CMU. So they'll go on the penalty kill for the second time tonight. And if, if their first penalty kill is uh, going to set the precedent for anything, we've got something to worry about here if you're bowling great. Oh, yeah, especially when Caitlin Williams um, going off. We'll see how the offense is going to look because she is the point guard for this offense, making sure everyone's getting that pass, getting, getting a touch, and getting an opportunity to score. So we'll see some new... Looks uh, players here on offense and see how how they're able to conduct it. Last CMU penalty kill looked more like a CMU power play as they had control of the puck almost for the entirety of the 120 seconds. Delayed offsides here on Bowling Green forces the Chippewas to get some time. Now with speed, look out, splitting the defense, working in and a shot saved by Card. That was Gabriella Nixon with that opportunity. Here comes Schick, up the right wing, dumped the puck into the offensive end for the Falcons. Palmer whips it around the boards, intercepted there by Marshall. Puck popped up in the air and the Chippewas are ahead. Here's Del Rey, threw it on ahead. Look out, here's Nixon behind the defense. Nixon in with a shot and it was knocked away there by Card. Good defensive work to get back there for Bowling Green. Up in the right wing, here's Schick across the line. Cuts into the right corner off the pressure from Palmer. Her shot was blocked. Palmer there laying out the body for Central Michigan. Marshall threw it out front and it deflected off of a body and will come back out to neutralize with 50 to go in the Bowling Green power play. Palmer intercepted the the puck thrown into the CMU end and will retreat back to her own end and turn around and fire at the length of the ice. 32 seconds to go in the power play. Look at this, Brooke Hubert applying some pressure in the offensive end. 
here on the penalty kill. Puck tied up the left point right in front of us here. It's worked free there by Carparelli. But she's pressured. Here's Saudi working to the backhand out in front. Card made the save. And the rebound pops to the near side. 17-03 to go in period number two. Schick up right wing. Got past Barnett. Works in on tight on Abraham. But Annette Minder stood tall for CMU. And the Chippewas clear at the length of the ice. Icing will be the call with 16.48 to go. In period two. Um, with Caitlin um, going out for that time being, um, you could see Brooke Hubert and Zoe Saudi um, being effective on offense and getting getting some shots on goal. Um, Saudi had an opportunity there um, blocked by the goalie and Hubert getting involved, getting some touches, getting an opportunity. All the way to the right of Laura Abraham off of that draw or off of that icing call. CMU wins the draw and will charge right to left here in the second period. Flipped up the right wing boards. Here's Saudi at the right wing, throwing it on goal and turning it away. There was Card. Noel Simbro in with the four check here for CMU, chasing after Devin Marshall, who speeds up ice. She's over the line, right side, cuts into the circle and fires a shot, blockered away there by Abraham. Up the left points. The Falcons keep it in. There was Kenlin Foster rimming it around the boards. Chippewas have it on the near side. They are unable to get it out, though, is shutting it down to the point. There was Ellenberger. Puck was eventually worked free out to neutralize where Mariah Wilson throws it down low. Four minutes gone here in the second period. CMU still has a majority of the shots here in this one. They outshot the Falcons 25 to 10 through the first 20 minutes. Here's Chloe Unker over the line. Lost the puck and it's thrown back down by Central Michigan. No, icing is waved off. Kara Ellenberger back. Pressured here by Grace Liatino. Del Rey up at the point. In there with Whitus. And look down, it's stolen here by Schick. Schick will move into the right circle. A shot and a save there by Abraham with the blocker. Puck is tied up at the left point, it bounces around. Three white sweaters and two orange sweaters battle for it. And it eventually comes free in the possession of the Chippewas. Trying to work it out. Here's Wojtas shoveling it up to Del Rey. Intercepted, but offsides is Brina Oliphant for a stoppage of play with 5-0-2 gone. It's interesting, Reagan. Schnick is getting a lot. She's being very aggressive and getting shots on net. Um, I wonder if that's because if they're relying on her um, on a short bench, but she's just coming out here being active and getting shots. Yeah, talk about a short bench. Central Michigan has a relatively short bench for a team. Uh, they, they only have a nine Set. skaters available on their bench, plus the five on on the ice. Oh, and that's Woo! gonna be a tripping penalty. Indeed it will be as the Falcons touch up. And it's gonna be a trip on Jenna, on Jenna Muller. So CMU is gonna go back onto the power play for the second time tonight. 0 for 1 on their first opportunity. So the Chippewas finally getting to work on this power play. Here's Barnett at the right point, slides it down to Saudi. Out in front for Nixon. Nixon fires it on goal, and Card makes the save and holds on here. Well, this is what Coach wanted to harp on, right? It's the power plays, being able to take advantage on offense and, and take advantage of those opportunities and, and get some goals here. So it's going to stay here on, on the Bowling Green side, and um, CMU's trying gonna attack and make something happen here. On Here's offense. Barnett, a shot from the high slot deflected on goal. And Card happened to be in the right place at the right time. Palmer at the half wall, down low to Del Rey. Kylie Del Rey lost the puck and 
Here come the Falcons. Up left wing, here's Morgan Chick across the line. Look at the back check here by Gabriella Nixon to come back. Oh, and a bouncing puck was bounce, came out in front of Abraham and she had to pounce on that one to make the save and hold on and that'll force a shorthanded offensive zone draw for Bowling Green. Abraham doing her job, making those timely saves, trying to go for that shutout to here tonight and she's on her way for one. Chippewas will hold behind their net here. 13.45 to go in period two. Here's Castiglione trying to find Leotino, but her pass was just too far. Bowling Green throws it into the Central Michigan end. Icing waved off. Here's Declan Wojtas. She's taken down, and oh, a Falcons hurt in the corner. Possibly that was Emmy Wainek. For one, yet she gets up and skates to the bench. Hope she's all right. 44 seconds left in the Chippewa power play. Castiglione up the left point. She'll work in and fire a shot. Saved by Card in the rebound. Comes out to the near side. Castiglione on it once more. Castiglione trying to find Palmer at the point. Intercepted. Here's Marshall. Marshall over the line left side for the Falcons. Around the outside of the circle and behind the cage. Abraham hugs the post as she watches Marshall work up top. Here's Oliphant from the right point. Her shot was blocked. And it comes back onto the far side. Marshall works it up top. A long shot from the point, and Abraham gobbles it up with seven seconds to go in the power play. Got a little chippy at the end there. Um, Kostilny and uh, a Bowling Green player. But um, Kostilny, um, during the power play, um, Kostilny turned it over. Um, I'm sure she didn't want that, but in the power play, they need to be better and not turn over that ball and take advantage of their time with that puck being up a man and, um, and getting a goal. 12.40 to go here in the second period of play. CMU leads 2-0 off of the second and third goals of the campaign for Kylie Del Rey. Del Rey Worked it on ahead to Zoe Saudi. Saudi in behind the defense, works in, fires a shot. And a great defensive play there by Muller to get back and shut off the shot there from Saudi on the back check. Here come the Falcons trying to start the breakout. Here is Caparelli. Caparelli over the line. Lost the puck, it comes free to the far side. Yunker let Caparelli get to it first though. Now the Chippewas working up. Here is Kylie Del Rey with speed on the left side. Across that line and will chase the loose puck into the corner after it was worked free by Garger. It comes out. Uh, puck is thrown out in front and Nixon couldn't get to it in time. Nixon on the near side. Her clearing attempt was, or her shot was blocked. CMU gets it back and throws it down the wall. Behind the goal, here's Gargak. Gargak worked it up the right point and it's thrown back into the Central Michigan and here's Castiglione back in her defensive end. Threw it up ice and this will turn into icing against the Maroon and Gold with 11.24 to go in the second. Not much uh, happening here on both sides. Everyone's getting, or both teams are getting an uh, even amount of shots. Um, more opportunities for um, the young players for CMU. Um, but nothing to really hang your head on in this period so far. It's been a back and forth contest thus far. CMU's goals came kind of at the end of some extended pressure in the offensive end. Especially with the first one that broke through and then William sniped, or Del Rey, pardon me, sniped from about five feet out of the crease on the left side to make it a two nothing game. 11.04 to go here in the second period. Here's Mariah Wilson on the left side. She throws it out front, taking the puck. There was Grace Le Leotino as it bounces around. It comes up to the right point. Look out. Here's a shot from Palmer that was blocked off the back of the leg there by Gargak. Now Schick gave it away. Leotino from the slot put it wide. Marshall across the way, holds the puck for Bowling Green. 
She chases the loose puck and will turn on the Jets up the right wing. Across that line, works into the right corner. Around the outside of the circle and behind the cage. Puts on the brakes in the corner, throws it out in front. And an opportunity there, and Abraham made the save. 10.15 to go here in the second period. Over the line, here's Allison Haney. She'll dump it in and go off for changes. Bowling Green clears it out. But Leah Palmer will skate backwards to her own line and throw it up. Here's Williams. Williams with the puck, fires it out in front. And trying to get it on the backhand there was Mermelik. Not sure why she chose to go with a backhand shot there, especially with so much time. 9.41 to go here in period number two. Reagan Cleaves on the call for you here alongside Matthew Ryder. Here at Martin Ice Arena on a beautiful night. Joel Drucker working the camera for us. As he has for multiple games here on CCHN this season. Now look out, Williams sidesteps, works in. And, the, and it, her shot in the circle was blocked. Now the puck is worked free. Kiara Ellenberger will start the rush, a three on two for the Falcons. Turning into a four on two. She'll cut over the line, fire a shot. It hit Mac Barnett and trickled on goal. Where it was held on to there by Lauren Abraham with 9.03 to go. All right, folks, the, pro the broadcast of today's game is a copyrighted presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association, Mac TV, and the CMU Club Hockey Network. No reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution of the descriptions or accounts of this game may take place without the express written consent of the ACHA, CCHN, and Mac TV. Look out, a shot right off the draw, coming off the stick of Brina Oliphant. And Lauren Abraham stands tall to make the save with nine minutes exactly to go here in period two. We're over halfway through this hockey game, CMU up two nothing. Looking to build off of their sweep and their surprising sweep. To say the least, off Michigan State two weekends ago, winning in comeback fashion three to two on opening night in overtime with Brooke Hubert getting the game winning goal before they traveled the hour south to Lansing and beat Michigan State four to one at Munn Ice Arena. First time they've swept Michigan State in Coach Haney's tenure with the Chippewas. CMU has some extended offensive zone time. Here's Del Rey in the left circle. Slides it across. Williams out in front. Oh, she ripped it high. Pardon me. That was Nixon out in front. Del Rey gets to it along the half wall near side. 8.06 to go in the second. She'll work in the bottom of the left circle from a shot. Bagel. Oh, my Lord. What a goal. Del Rey has the hat trick, and CMU has three goals. Oh, my gosh. Del Rey definitely has that swagger. After that goal, she came to the home, the home crowd here in Martin Ice Arena and just jumped up for joy. She has that swagger, she has that confidence, and it shows on the ice here and after the play going to her fans. And she should be excited. A hat trick here, and we're not even two-thirds of the way through this hockey game. Oh, my goodness. 32 minutes exactly it took Delray to score. 12 minutes into the second period, and she's got her third of the night and fourth of the year. She's only a freshman, too. She is just playing like she's a veteran, just controlling this game on offense. Palmer Wait. gets credited with the assist on that one. No, look, a bouncing puck thrown on goal and standing right in front. There was Chloe Unker getting the deflection right in front of Abraham and the netminder for CMU had to, had to be on top of it as it came right in front of her. 7.28 to go here in period three. CMU up three nothing off of Three goals from Kylie Del Rey. She now has four on the campaign. Palmer also gets her, sec her second assist of the evening. 
And for Del Rey, not only is that the third goal of the night, that's the second goal from almost exactly the same spot. Bottom of the left circle, working in tight on goal and picking not the near side top corner, but the far side top corner. I think that's her sweet spot right there. So Bowling Green better catch on and make sure she doesn't get to that spot. And for Logan Card, the netminder for Bowling Green, that's something that you might want to work on in practice is cutting down that angle from in tight on the goal line because that's been that's the second time that Del Rey has picked that top far corner on her. Now look out, Wilson trying to battle for the puck in the left circle. It work, it's worked free, and Yunker will take it and spin it down the ice. Icing is called a bit prematurely as it looked like Wojtas and McAuliffe would have beaten the puck to the goal line, but referee stuck his arm up. CMU, made the call. CMU is getting a new set of lines here. Um, new players with six and a half minutes to go, seeing what they can uh, contribute here with the captain, Leo Palmer, and Emily Kostielny. Hubert to dig in with Marshall for the draw. Hubert eventually picks up the loose puck after the tie. Hubert behind the goal and into the right corner. She's pinned up along the boards there by Ellenberger. It's worked free. Now Williams with the shot. And it's up into the shoulder. And held on to there by Logan Carr. Williams is looking for that first goal of the season. And she is getting a lot of good opportunities. Obviously, she's the point guard of this team, like I keep saying. Um, making sure her teammates get involved because she's a great passer. She's great with her hands. And... Um, She's definitely looking for that first goal of the season. Puck is tied up along the half wall across the way. The Falcons trying to get out of it and start to break out here. But Williams, again, with the speed, trying to get to that puck and breaks that breakout up. Albeit momentarily, the Falcons in with a shot. And it's held onto there by Abraham. Another good shot. For Bowling Green, they've had their opportunities, but Lauren Abraham has been on top of things here through the first 35 minutes. Labor, Abraham is not making anything easy for these Bowling Green players. They're going to have to earn it if they want to score any goals here tonight. Draw to the left of the aforementioned goalkeeper for the Maroon and Gold. Bowling Green wins the draw. They throw it out in front. Loose puck in the slot, and it stays loose before the Chippewas are able to clear it down the length of the ice, and icing is waved off. Great play there by none other than Kylie Del Rey to Del Rey. negate that icing. Across the way, Castellani plays at her own blue line. Up the right wing to Zoe Saudi over the line. Saudi throwing it out in front just too far there for Gabriella Nixon. Nixon takes it in the left corner, throws it out in front. It's deflected onto the stick of Morgan Schick. She got labeled in that opening period. It's good to see her back. She was down on the ice for quite some time. Bowling Green has to regroup and neutralize a pass ahead deflected off of Saudi. She'll get it back on the near side courtesy of Gabriella Nixon. And we're, as we have under five to play here in the second period. Stay with us after the conclusion of the second period. I will have the, first, the second animation report for you right here on CCHN. We'll take a look uh, and recap the happenings of the first 40 minutes of play here from Martin Ice Arena before taking a look at the professional side of the out-of-town scoreboard, including a look at the Grand Rapids Griffins, the Saginaw Spirit, and the Detroit Red Wings, as well as the rest of the National Hockey League. Look out, loose puck in front of Abraham, and it was eventually cleared to the right point. Puck knocked out of the air, and Leotino will play it through neutral ice. Bouncing puck at, Mar at the Martin Ice Arena logo at center ice. Leotino tries to toe drag to get past the defense of the Falcons, but it's much to her chagrin. It doesn't go her way. This is lifted down the ice by the Chippewas. Icing is the call. Both teams getting their opportunities, like you said, uh, on both sides on offense. Um, but um, 
Seems like uh, Del Rey is the only player that seems to find the promised land. Um, but both teams definitely getting their opportunities. And uh, we'll see if we can get another goal or two in the last three minutes of the second period. In for the draw. It'll be Marshall for, C for Bowling Green digging in with Leotino. Marshall got the... Not the better end of that, but Falcons give it away, and here come the Chippewas. Leotino lost the puck in neutral ice. Simbro trying to forward it on ahead. Fans on the pass, and here comes Devin Marshall across the line left side. Marshall working around the outside of the corner. Works to the near side. Outside of the circle to the top of the right circle. Slides it across to the left point. Here's a shot from Ellenberger. It goes wide. 3.14 to go in period two. Buck is free in, in the far corner. Chippewas are the first to get to it. They work it up, a pass ahead. Poked ahead, but for the Falcons, it's Devin Marshall. Marshall sidesteps the four check and will move across the line left side. Coasts to the corner, throwing it out in front, and that was just put wide of goal. There by Alafon out in front. Up the left point, here's Ellenberger. Ellenberger, her shot was blocked, and here come the Chippewas. Romalek couldn't get it on ahead, and CMU intercepts. Pass ahead, Barnett trying to find Simbro, and it'll go for icing here with 2.27 to go here. In the second period, and Barnett was frustrated after that icing. Yeah, she was very frustrated. Um, but the Chippewas, they seem to be uh, slowing down a little bit, um, maybe getting a little winded um, because they're, they're, they've been moving around on the offensive end. But uh, same as Bowling Green, they seem a little wind, winded as well. Run to the right of Lauren Abraham. And the Chippewas end to our right. Off of the tie-up. Leotino trying to get it up top, but it's intercepted by the Falcons, but they turn it over. Pass up. To, uh, pass up to the point. Mermelec battling for it along the half wall. Puck is worked free. Look out. It's in the high slot. A shot there by McAuliffe went wide. Now they gave it away out in front. Now here's Gar... Gargak and her shot from the slot was deflected into the near corner. 153 to go in the second period. CMU leading 3 0 off of a hat trick for Kylie Del Rey. The laid off side here on the Falcons as they dump the puck in prematurely. Lauren Abraham halts the puck behind her own goal. Stretch pass ahead. Leotino over the line, but not before Williams. And it'll be an offside here on Central Michigan. Williams is definitely the fastest um, player on our team. She's very shifty. She seems to be going all out and just going side to side at a very high speed. Draw just outside the bowling green line on the near side. CMU momentarily had possession of the offensive end, but they're forced to retreat back to their own line. Castiglione up the right wing. Loose puck at the right point. They battle for it there after the entry by CMU. Two white sweaters, two orange sweaters go at it. And the Chippewas come out with the puck, but Hubert was taken down on the half wall. Cross ice pass off the half wall, intercepted by CMU. Here's Mariah Wilson. Retreating it back to Castiglione with 60 seconds to go in the second period. Castiglione cuts across the ice before dumping it into the offensive end. Icing is not an option as she was past the red line. Across the way, getting tied up there is Williams. In there with Brooke Hubert battling two on one with the Falcons. Great play there by Morgan Schick, but she couldn't oh. get past Williams oh. and a pass out in front and Wilson couldn't get good lumber on it. Palmer works it down from left point to the corner. Wilson threw it out in front, blocked. Gets it back to Palmer. Palmer in the slot, fires a shot. Blocked in front. Williams to loose puck across the way at the half wall. Oh. She was angled off of the puck, and here come the Falcons. Up the left wing, over the line. They hesitate and fire. Oh. And Abraham holds on to it. 
with 11 seconds to go in the second. Yeah, sorry, I got a little excited there. Um, <laughs> Caitlin Williams had a dime across the rank to um, one of her teammates, um, but she couldn't um, put it in the net. But Abraham making that big stop at the end with 20 seconds to go left in the period. Wilson just fanned on the one-timer. And what is a great opportunity. Puck is back down. Loose puck at neutral ice. Del Rafe takes a tumble. And we have offsides as time expires. At the end of two periods of play, CMU dominating Bowling Green. Three to nothing here off of three goals from Kylie Del Rey. We'll recap that when we come back here on the CMU Club Hockey Network. We're back here inside Martin Ice Arena for the second intermission report here brought to you by CMUWomensHockey.com. Reagan Cleaves here Radio Rinkside with you here on CCHN where at the end of two periods CMU has a dominating 3-0 lead courtesy of a Kylie Del Rey hat trick which she completed just 32 minutes into this hockey game. She got her first of the night at 11.02 of the opening frame when uh, she... Uh, Batted home a rebound out in front of Logan Card for her first of the night and second of the campaign. She added on to that only, uh, only two minutes and 23 seconds later when, when she buried a shot from about five feet from the uh, outside of the crease on the left side and she picked the top corner pass Logan Card to make it 2-0 CMU going into the opening, going into the first break. She came, uh, Central Michigan came out hard in that second period, but Bowling Green countered just as well, getting their fair sh share of opportunities, both left and right. These teams had a very good f second period, and then until Kylie Del Rey had a dominating shift in the offensive end, where she and the Chippewas held the puck 
in the zone to our left for a solid minute, minute and a half, and it was finished off by Delray's third of the night, fourth of the campaign, from basically the exact same spot where she scored her second of the night. Uh, this one coming exactly 12 minutes into the period, 32 minutes into the game, and that's one heck of an accomplishment for Kylie Del Rey, picking up her hat, her picking up the hat trick here in only the third game of this campaign. Shots on goal in that second period. CMU had 12, but they were outshot by Bowling Green by three. Bowling Green had 15 in that second period. CMU still holds the advantage in total shots, though 37. 225. Taking a look at the out-of-town scoreboard, Grand Rapids. Uh, the Grand Rapids Griffins in action here on opening night. They're taking on the San Diego Gulls at the end of one period of play. San Diego leads 1-0 off of, uh, off of a goal from, uh, uh, from Hunter Drew. That came early on in that first period. Uh, the Detroit Red Wings tied uh, or deadlocked with the Montreal Canadiens at zero at the end of one in Detroit. And for the Saginaw Spirit, they lead two to one with about five minutes left in the opening period against the Guelph Storm. Uh, that, you can listen to that game on 100.5 uh, WSGW. You can listen to the Griffins on 106.9 FM if you're in the Grand Rapids area. And 97-1, the ticket will have the Detroit Red Wings for you. Taking a look around the rest of the National Hockey League. Uh, the Lightning lead the Blue Jackets uh, three to two, and all the other games are later. The Rangers will take on the Jets, and the Hurricanes will take on the Sharks. All that is later tonight. We'll step aside. Three nothing. CMU leads at the end of two periods. We'll be right back with more action in a moment here from Martin Ice Arena here on CCHN.
As we're back here inside Martin Ice Arena, Reagan Cleaves alongside Matthew Ryder here for the final 20 minutes of the first, of the <laughs> second period. Oh goodness. Uh, we love we love interacting with fans here, and it's always fun to we see their a, antics. We got a different type of crowd here tonight. I mean, holy moly. A lot of screaming. My, I'm about to go deaf, for real. Oh, get used to it. This is a normal crowd oh, okay. here for the... <laughs> Uh, we got 20 minutes left on the clock here in regulation. CMU has mm. dominated this one, not only out shooting uh, their, their counterparts from Ohio by 12, but they also are out are outscoring them with help from Kylie Del Rey. Yeah, Del Rey with three goals tonight, and, you know, she's been the only um, offensive player um, to do her thing on the offensive side. But as a team, they're hanging their hat on on defense, and they're going to continue that going into the third quarter and finish this game strong with a W. CMU will head from left to right across your radio dial wearing those home white uniforms with maroon shoulders, maroon and gold stripes along the forearms with black pants and, or black helmets and maroon pants with white socks. Lauren Abraham in net to our left has stopped all 25 shots that have come her way thus far in this one. Bowling Green decked out in those orange jerseys with brown shoulders and with white trim, as well as some brown and white stripes along the bottom of the jerseys and the forearms. Black helmets and black pants and orange socks. Their net minder is Logan Card. She has stopped all but two of the CMU 37 shots. We're underway here in the third period of play. Del Rey takes a tumble at neutral ice. As the Chippewas battle for control of the puck just inside the line across the way. It's worked out and here come the Falcons. Palmer working the defensive side of things as the Falcons enter the zone. Now look out, here's Nixon throwing the puck down the ice with 19.23 to go in the third, and we'll have an icing call. Hey, Reagan, I'm trying to focus on this game, but the, the, there's a, an annoying person in the crowd, but I won't say much more about that. But 40 seconds in, and um, both teams trying to find a, an identity of what they want to implement in this third quarter, period. 39 seconds gone, look out, a quick shot off the draw there by Schick, and Abraham made the save. 19, 15 to go here in period number three. Here's Del Rey over the line for CMU. She's got three tonight, looking for a fourth. She's been on fire here for CMU. Here's Palmer back in her own end. Throws it up the wall. And here's Nixon across the line. Nixon around the outside, throws it off the side of the net, gets, the, gets her own rebound out in front, and the Falcons are able to clear it out of the front of goal. Now look out, here's Brina Oliphant down the right side, throwing it into the middle of the ice and to the near side. It's Allison Haney to play it. Haney works it up the right wing. Not at neutral ice, Bowling Green takes it and flips it into the offensive end. Haney drops it off. Oh, look out, a pass off the side of the goal intended from Wojtas to go to the near side to Haney, but it was off target and hit off the side of the net. Almost a Steve Smith situation there if you're CMU. And up three to nothing. You don't want to give Bowling Green any semblance of momentum here in the final frame. I think the first five minutes of this period is going to be very important. Here's Brooke Hubert over the right wing. Puts on the brakes, trying to find a pass. She finds Castiglione at the right point, slides it across to Barnett. Oh, she lost the puck to the stick of Chloe Yunker, but Barnett once again found the puck and was able to work it down low. Here's Williams. Williams out in front, and Mermelik fan on the shot. She's had a couple of good opportunities and this one hasn't been able to capitalize. Chippewas throw it on goal. Williams couldn't find it in her skates though. 
Battle for it along the half wall. Williams comes out with it out in front. Here's, ba here's Barnett with a one-timer. Now out in front. Williams taken down. And the puck goes to the side. How is that not a cross-checking penalty as Williams got taken down by Gargak out in front. Now coming the other way, Abraham took a shot off of the cage. And the Chippewas come ahead the other way. Pass was tipped into the offensive end there by Williams with three to go in this, or th three gone here in this third period of play. Here's Foster back at her own line. The Falcon captain tries to clear it, but it goes off the face of Mariah Wilson and up and out of play. Yeah, I don't know um, how that wasn't a penalty with Williams going into the crease of the goalie uh, for BG, let alone not a goal. At that puck looked like it was going in. Um. Went about two inches wide of that left post. Another great opportunity for Central Michigan and Williams still looking for her first goal of the campaign, not to mention her first point as she comes into tonight not having uh, put a mark on the score sheet in that Michigan State series. Looking to change the way, change that here tonight and the rest of this weekend here against Bowling Green. She's making a huge imprint regardless, even if it's not hitting the stat sheet, controlling the puck and implementing it to her teammates. Abraham freezes this at the side of her net. And speaking of the rest of this series, Central Michigan and Bowling Green are back in action tomorrow bright and early, 10.30 uh, will be your puck drop. Matthew Ryder will have the call with Joel Drucker. Here, right here on CCHN. That Hope you've be. got your coffee tomorrow, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not an early morning person, but that should be a fun broadcast. Joel's used to waking up early. Anybody on the D3 hockey team has got to be used to work, waking up early. 7.30 a.m. practices on any given weekday. No, thank you. God. Delray moves out the left wing to Gabrielle Nixon. She motors across the line left side. Puts on the brakes, works it up the wall. Intended there for M McAuliffe. That was deflected wide. And now a shot from the left point was turned aside by Yunker, or by, by Card, and she holds it off the carom off the end boards for a whistle with three minutes to go. Bowling Green's goalie is uh, really knocking down these pucks for CMU. Um, except for Del Rey. Del Rey seems to crack the code um, on the offensive side. Let's see if these Chippewas can, uh, can build off that. Chippewas have had most of the momentum here in this game thus far. This one's chucked down the ice and it will be icing here on the Falcons with 15.25 to go in regulation. You can see Del Rey nodding her head. She's feeling good. She's got three goals. But we still got 15 minutes left, and it's only a three-goal lead. So, like you said, Reagan, you don't want to give BG any opportunities to get any momentum going. 3-2, three, 3-1 two, three, game, 3-2 three, game, it could catch up. and So they need to s stay on the pedal. And, and you can't get complacent here if you're CMU. You've played some big opponents this season, like Michigan State, and you've beaten them. And you've had leads. You've had three-goal leads in this er, this year, but you have to be able to hold on to it and play good defensive hockey. Bowling Green really doing well on defense here, but they're down 3-0, so they need to start getting some offense going, getting the puck on the other side, setting up their O, maybe taking advantage of power plays and breakaways, so. Draw to the left of Card. Saudi motors down into the right wing corner to battle for that puck for CMU. She gets to the puck across the way, pulls into the circle. Good play there by the Falcons. Jenna Muller. Now Schick plays it across too far from, from Muller. Muller plays it off the boards and puts a shot on goal and Abraham makes the save with 14.40 to go here 
in period number three. Fans, be sure to tune in to CCHN tomorrow for a CMU hockey doubleheader. Start your day off with the women's D2 Chippewas taking on these same Falcons at 10.30 before the men's Division Three Chippewas will, will take on Florida Gulf Coast for the first and only time this season at 5 p.m. Coverage of both games will be right here on CCHN. You're home for Chippewa hockey. Look out, Williams behind the defense. She'll work in, fire it and score! Goal number one of the year, and it's about time. Net. CMU building on the Delray hat trick, and Williams has her first goal of the year. Like you said, Ray, it is about time. She had a lot. She's been having a bunch of opportunities throughout this game to put that puck in the net, and she's been having a uh, a footprint this whole game, just passing the ball or passing the puck and making sure her teammates are getting the puck, and she. She finally found an opportunity to get her first goal of the season. She I know I, I know we've been calling her the point guard of this offense, uh, Matt, but keep in mind we're still playing hockey. Yeah. We're not playing basketball. <laughs> yeah, she's, she, she's just really good at implementing the puck and moving around to her teammates, making sure they get involved. Good to see she she's involved in the offense with a goal too. Great to see her get her first point of the year and good to see it's a goal. She came close a couple of times in that Michigan State series. She's had a couple of good opportunities through the first two periods of this one, and she finally breaks through. Gives CMU a four-goal lead. Bowling Green chasing the puck back into their own end. It'll be Kiara Ellenberger. She'll work it up the left wing. Trying to find Kate McAuliffe. Puck bounces around, McAuliffe back on it, flips it on ahead, it's kicked into the offensive end there by Devin Marshall. Puck is free in the corner. Mac Barnett rims it around the boards. Kept in at the, left, at the right point there by Schick. She'll tie it up in the corner, out in front, Schick, the save by Abraham, the rebound! And out in front, the Falcons couldn't get a shot off. Now the puck is in the goal! Morgan Schick gets the goal. A bouncing puck from behind the cage. Abraham got turned around and it got bounced off of her and in with 12.55 to go in the third. Bowling Green has cracked the puzzle. It's 4-1. Yeah, Abraham being hard on herself, letting that goal get in. But she she was being very aggressive in that crease. That puck was just staying in the crease way too long. Um, her teammates coming to her by her side and making sure that she's in positive um, spirits. And even though she's not going to get that shutout, she's finishing the game strong. Well, she probably didn't get that shutout, Matt, because you jinxed her back in the second period. Yeah. You don't say a shutout before a shutout's in the books. Yeah, that is definitely <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I should have known that. Hopefully we'll still get the W though. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't say that either. There's still plenty of time left in this hockey game and Schick almost getting Bowling Green back within two and a shot from the right circle. Now a shot from distance and a save is made there by Laura Abraham off a shot from Kenlin Foster at the left point. 12.23 to go here in period three, four to one. CMU leads this one. Kylie Del Rey getting a hat trick in the first 32 minutes of the hockey game before Caitlin Williams got netted her first of the campaign moments ago. And then with the play at the side of the net, CMU saw their, saw their lead cut to three. Now they're trying to get it back and Sonny scores! Zoe Sotti found the weakness of the five hole in Logan Card, and she puts it right between the wickets. And CMU has restored their four goal lead, it's 5-1. I was literally just about to say, if, since I'm jinxing things, I was hoping Zoe Sotti was gonna get a goal in this period, and five seconds later, she just notches it in. For my light the lamp, and she's definitely one of the top 
uh, performers on this offense. So glad to see her not to go her first goal of the game and her third on the season, continuing that three goal game streak. So Del Rey getting her fourth point of the night. Another four point night for a Chippewa. Someone buy her a dinner or something. Jeez. <laughs> she is amazing in this game. Bucks caught it her yunker right in front of us here. She's able to work it free though. And Saudi throws it up the right wing to Del Rey. Del Rey into the offensive end. Hesitates and rims it around the boards across the way. Brina on the front. Lost the puck. And it's played back to Barnett. Barnett fed a backhand pass up left wing to Mermelek. Bree Mermelek over the line. She'll spin around and fire it into the near corner on the centering attempt. Williams up top for Barnett. She lost it. Here's Whitus. Whitus a shot. That was turned aside by Card. 10.47 to go here in period three. CMU up five to one. Similar to their lat, similar to their opening game against Bowling Green last year, where they won six one down at Slater Slater Ice Arena in Bowling Green, Ohio. Bowling Green came back the next night though and won three nothing for one of their three wins on the campaign. Bouncing puck out in front and Mermelek fan in the shot. Here's Hubert at the bottom of the circle, fired it high. And it comes up and around the boards. Great angling play there by Barnett to work Marshall off the puck. Uh, number 13 for Bowling Green takes a huge shot high over Abraham's head. CMU has got the rebound. Back to BG. Down in the corner. Here's Marshall behind the goal. Under 10 minutes to play here in the third period. CMU recently restoring a four goal lead with Saudi's first of the night. Now a backhand shot saved by Abraham and she falls on the rebound and Marshall is getting a bit frustrated here for Bowling Green. Taking a whack at a couple of Chippewas. If you're looking for game reports, stats, schedules, and more, take a trip to CMUWomensHockey.com. There you can find those and much more, including player information, recruiting information, apparel, and, and more. That's CMUWomenshockey.com. Bowling Green trying to establish some offensive zone pressure here for the first time in a while. It's cut off though by Mariah Wilson. She feeds it up left wing to Simbro. Simbro throws it into the offensive end. She gets it back though in the left corner on the intercept. Lobbed it across the ice to the near side. Wilson, Wilson's pass up top was intercepted. And here is Morgan Schick. Schick over the line, lost the puck. Leah Palmer gets the rebound. She'll send a cross ice feed ahead to Simbro. It's too far for her. And Foster gets to it there for Bowling Green. It's thrown out in front. Simbro trying to find Palmer, but that doesn't work. Here's Marshall down the left side. Good angling play there by Gabriella Nixon. Her, her clearing attempt's intercepted, though. A shot blocked. And the rebound on the near side. The, on the doorstep, Devin Marshall couldn't get stick on it. 8.24 to go here in period three. Bowling Green couldn't keep it in, and Lauren Abraham comes out to put a halt to that puck. CMU trying to improve to 3 0 on the year. Bowling Green still looking for their first win of the season, falling 7 4 to Pittsburgh on their opening night back a week ago. Across the way, Falcons. Work the puck free and send it down to the Chippewa end. Castellani at neutral ice, pushes it up the right wing. They jam away at it and, Bre and Bryn Oliphant comes away with it. A head on right wing, here's McAuliffe. McAuliffe couldn't get a good shot off as she was worked over there by Barnett. Barnett up to Saudi on the near half boards. Saudi cross ice feed 
ahead to Del Rey. Del Rey's got Nixon out in front. She finds Nixon working in and she scores! Gabriella Nixon and Del Rey has five points on the night. It's 6-1 CMU with 7.28 to go in regulation. Everybody is feeding off of Del Rey's magic here tonight. Another assist from Del Rey. And everyone's joining in the fun. Look, goal number six for the team. Time of the goal is going to be 12.32. And for Nixon, that's her second of the campaign. Got one back in the opening series against Michigan State. And good to see her back on the score sheet here in this 6-1 route. Now here's Del Rey cutting to the middle, goes to the backhand, fires it, she just put it wide. You're looking for point number six on the night. And normally we don't put this out before we get to the postgame show, but we would be insane if we didn't put Kylie Del Rey at the first. Oh, look out. Yunker couldn't finish the backdoor feed there for Bowling Green. This is sent the length of the ice. Icing is waved off. Taking the long skate back there is Regan Gargak. Out of neutral ice, Williams hesitated to enter the zone. Stayed on side though, but Brooke Hubert played it back to Costelli on her own line. Costelli up to Brooke Hubert. She works some magic of her own back on opening night, scoring the game winner against Michigan State. Just a couple of seconds into overtime. Now here come the Falcons, up left wing, into the offensive end, they get taken down. And Brooke Hubert comes in to swoop up the loose change. Now Williams still has the puck into the slot, works to the backhand, coming in on goal, and Card makes the save. Williams couldn't corral the bouncing puck until she was about two feet out in front, and that probably helped Logan Card in that respect. Five. 52 to go in period number three. CMU out to a commanding 6-1 lead. Now look out at 2-1-1 for Bowling Green into the shot. And making the save there was Lauren Abraham. That was an interesting sequence right there. Um, as number 12 for BG was coming down um, for a shot, Mac Burnett kept her stick in front of her and not in front of the offense of BG. I think she... Uh, wanted to trust her goalie, Abraham, so she could see that puck all the way through. And as a defenseman back on a two-on-one, you do generally want to leave that shot to your goaltender so they can see it all the way. And you do try to take that, uh, take the passing lane away to make sure it's not an easy tap on the back door. Here's Allison Haney at the right point. Works down the wall. Her shot was blocked by Foster. Clearing attempt kept in by Haney at the half wall. Rimmed around the boards, Foster down in the corner to get it. Throws up the boards to Schick near his side. Schick gets taken down, and here come the Falcons. Brina Alifant working over the line. That's going to be off sides as just ahead of the play was Maomi Caparelli with 5.04 to go here in the third. Wow. This, this is uh, the energy is piling up here for the Chippewas. I think, like I said, I think the first five minutes was very important coming into this third period, making sure that they make a statement and don't let um, their foot off the pedal going into the third, making sure BG doesn't catch momentum. And a bit worrying, oh look out! Laura Abra or Lauren Abraham trying to cut off the passing lane with her own with her stick, almost put the puck in her own net. Now that should have been interference, but look out, Nixon behind the defense. Puck was just too far for her, but. Saudi got interfered with on the zone entry, but that will go on call. Puck is loose up at the left point. Central Michigan working the puck free. Leah Palmer to the near side for Del Rey. Del Rey throwing it out in front. Look out, it was intercepted. Here come the Falcons the other way. Over the line right side, stepping into the circle of shot. And Abraham knocked it away. Worked up the wall, capped at the left point there by McAuliffe. Loose puck, kicked to her own skate, 
Her kick to her own stick here was Marshall throwing it out in front and she almost put it in from another sharp angle. Lauren Abraham has got to be careful. It's been almost three goals where she, she hasn't been tight to that post and Bowling Green is smartly trying to bank it off of her and into the net. Central Michigan comes away with the puck, a pass ahead. Goes into Bowling Green hands along the near side. Falcon defenseman Kate McAuliffe getting the puck. She'll work in, throws it on goal. Barnett shovels it to the corner. McAuliffe beats her to the puck, though, is a shot that was knocked away by Abraham. 3.33 to go here in the third period. Look out, a three-on-one developing here for Central Michigan. Williams down the left side, out in front for Hubert. Hubert working in, firing it, and making the save was card once again, and she'll hold on with 3.22 to go. I think Hubert's trying to get um, into the fun, too, trying to get a goal here um, in this in this period to, before we before we send things off. She's definitely gonna be a big part of the offense. Or is the big part of the offense, just hasn't put it in the net tonight. With three minutes to go, fans, this is your reminder to stay with us for the post-game show. I'll follow the conclusion of this one. Matt and I will be back with a recap of this one, a final look at the out-of-town scoreboard, and we'll introduce our three stars of the game. That shot was blocked away by Logan Card, CMU back on it. A shot by Wojt is thrown out in front. Oh, that one off the skate of Gargak on the back door. Almost deflected in off of the defenseman's skate. Wojt is back in her own line. Slides it across there for Allison Haney. Haney works it up the wing left side. Into the offensive end here is Hubert. Hubert, the back door she's taken down. Not really penalty worthy there. Here's Schick intercepting the puck and neutral ice. Over the line left side. Good defensive work there by Leah Palmer at the top of the circle. She works the puck free from Schick and rims it around the boards to the near side. On it, here's Mariah Wilson. Wilson working up the right wing with 2.19 to go in the opening period. Pardon me, in this game. Across the way, working and splitting the defense. Here's Oliphant. Bring all the fun around the outside of the cage. The backs tries the wrap around. Stuffed there by Abraham. 120 seconds to go in this one. 6 1 CMU leads. A plethora of goals. Half of them coming from Lee, or pardon me, half of them coming from Kylie Del Rey. She's also got two assists to go on top of that. She's got five on the night. Now here's Schick with a clapper from the slot and gobbled up there by Laura Abraham with 95 seconds to go in this one. Hit him with the left, hit him with the right. Abraham knocking these pucks down like fight night. <laughs> She's been awesome in this game, just like making sure nothing goes through. One went through, but she was really unhappy about herself, but her teammates came to her and say, hey, we got this in the bag. Just keep focusing on the next one. And I, I think she's happy. She's going to be happy for herself with just giving up one goal here tonight. And if we go back to that goal, there's really nothing Abraham could do about that. She had to, she had to dive over. Here's another save and another stop by Abraham. She had to dive over because she didn't know how quickly Bowling Green was going to get to that puck on the back door. And then by the time they did get that shot off and she made the save, it deflected behind her and she really didn't have a chance to get back uh, tight to the post before they could bank it off of her and in. Haney working the puck on the near side, slides it across to Kylie Del Rey. She'll work across the line. She's got Nixon back door again. Back door to Nixon, fires! And a save there by Carr Nixon looking for her second of the night in much the same fashion she scored her first. Chippewa still have control on the offensive end. Falcons try to clear it. It's cut off there by Barnett. Saudi throws it down low. It was off of the of a couple of skates out in front, and they'll backhand it up the wing. It's slid across to the near side with 40 seconds to go. Bowling Green still has control. Look out, a shot saved by Abraham. 
A good chance off the giveaway there by the Falcons. Brina Olafant, she was right out in front. And Abraham stood tall with 34 ticks remaining here in this one. Yeah, like you said, Reagan, um, Abraham might have not had much to do with that goal going through, but she's a competitor at heart, and she's always going to be um, hard on herself, making sure that she stops every goal. Under 30 to go. Here's a two-on-one. Here's Williams. Pulls up, feeds it back door, and another save by Card. And getting decked there was Brooke Hibbert. He, she's going after number four for the Bowling Green Falcons. That's Kara Ellenberger. Ellenberger decked Hubert at the side of the net, and she got up hot. Yeah. After that one. Yeah, Hubert didn't like that for sure. She was trying to see what was going on with that. She didn't want to get tossed around. Now Hubert slides it up top for Wojtas. She'll tee it up and fire it from the left point. Off the back of the goal. It's free to the side of the net with four seconds to go and we'll have a whistle with 3.2 remaining on the clock. There will be yeah. another draw. To the side of Logan Card, CMU is going to come out on top here at Martin Iser in a 6 to 1. Barring a quick goal, puck is down. Castellani holds it left point, slides it across to Wardis. And CMU is out to an undefeated 3 and 0 oh here through the first three games of this campaign. A wonderful start for them. And we'll recap their, we'll recap their third game of the year when we come back. 6 1 the final from Martin here on CCHN. Stay Woo! with us. Post game show coming up next.
We are back here after a dominating 6-1 victory for CMU here tonight. They get uh, three goals from Kylie Del Rey. That is what powered them to victory here this, uh, here this evening over Bowling Green for their third win over the Falcons in just two years. Reagan Cleaves here with Matthew Ryder here for one final time for the post-game show presented by Optimex Sports here on CCHN. Well, uh, Matt, things started off pretty darn quickly for CMU with Del Rey getting her first two goals of the night at 11.02 and 13.25 of that opening period. Yeah, you could see right away from the start she was all over the ice and you knew in the state series that she was going to have a big impact going into the season, but she was on fire today, just having the first three goals, making it 3 nothing, and then going into the third period, her magic just went all over her teammates, and her teammates starting to score, including with Zoe Saudi, um, and I believe uh, Williams had a goal as well. So um, Ky Kylie Del Rey had a heck of a game today, and... It's going to show throughout um, the series against Bowling Green. Yeah, these two teams back at it tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. We'll have coverage of that one for you here on CCHN. Well, Del Rey got a hat trick in the first 32 minutes of this hockey game, and she wasn't done. Yes, she didn't score another goal the rest of the night, but she distributed the puck extremely well the rest of the evening. Yes, yes. She, uh, look, she's not, she's a, looks like she's a fir pass first player. And, but when she has an opportunity, she'll be aggressive and find that hole in the net. Um, but she's willing to get everyone else involved, making sure they get their opportunities because they, we have a lot of offensive weapons on this team. So she knows that, but she's going to be the captain on offense going into the season. Yeah, and it was Del Rey getting the assists on the last two Central Michigan goals, including a couple of two-on-ones with Gabriella Nixon. Uh, well, uh, Del Rey both times worked down the left side and fed it out in front for Nixon. Nixon buried it the first time, but she, uh, the pass was just too far for her the second time. Uh, so CMU coming out on top 6-1 to one here this evening at Martin Ice Arena. They'll be back again bright and early tomorrow, 10.30 to take on these same Falcons Ooh. to wrap up their weekend series. Uh, our players to watch for today, Zoe Saudi had a couple of goals here for the Chip, or had a couple of points for the Chippewas. She had uh, a goal and two assists. She assisted on the second Delray goal, as well as the Nixon goal that came uh, with about uh, and about seven minutes left in regulation. Our uh, second one was Katie Williams. She had her first goal of the campaign here tonight uh, on a beautiful shot from the slot that. Got her her first goal of the year. Matt, how about we take a look at BGSU's players to watch? Yeah, Bully Green um, seemed like they struggled on offense um, uh, due to Abraham being um, dominant in, in goal tonight. Um, but the players that we were watching is Oli Fant. She was very aggressive and effective moving the puck, um, but um, unable to put um, anything in goal um, or do anything. Um, uh, but Marshall had an assist tonight. Um, to one of her teammates to, to have the only goal of the game in the third period. Um, but the offense seemed very shaky. Um, like we said, um, CMU, they can ha hang their hat on in their defense to be aggressive this season, only give them up one goal, and that's what affected the offense for Bowling Green tonight. Certainly, and that one goal, really Abraham couldn't do much about that. She was caught out of her net trying to stop a backdoor play. And Schick was able to back, bank it in off of her and in. That's the only goal of the night for Bowling Green and their, uh, and their fifth of the year this season. Well, your keys to the game today, Matthew, were build off momentum, improve on the power play, and capitalize on breakaways. How do you think CMU did on those here tonight? Well, building off momentum, they definitely send a message tonight. I mean, with six goals, three by Del Rey tonight, and it, it spread up with the other offensive uh, teammates for CMU. And so they definitely didn't have any trouble building off momentum, improving the power play. They didn't get a lot of power play opportunities, um, but that didn't seem to affect the offense um, scoring uh, goal, goals wise um, and capitalizing on breakaways. So not many breakaways, not many power plays um, going on in this game, but um, nonetheless, CMU was able to stay on top of the offense and make things happen.
And you talk about capitalizing on breakaways, the Williams goal was a breakaway that developed right as I was doing an ad read. So I had to rush through the end of that, but Williams had a very nice finish on that, on that breakaway right off of a faceoff. And that's how she gets her first, and that's how CMU did capitalize on those breakaways. Now we'll move on to our three stars of the game. Matt, who's number three? Number three is Caitlin Williams. Uh, so she doesn't give, uh, get enough credit. Um, she doesn't get a lot of points or, or goals for that matter. She had her first one tonight. But she was very effective just moving the puck, making sure she's getting it to her teammates. I keep saying she's the point guard of the team. Reagan doesn't like that basketball term. But just like controlling it, making sure everyone's getting in their sets, and she's fast, and she's getting down the ice and making things happen. So it was very, very good to see her to get her first goal today. Um, that's number three. So what's who's Second number two? Second star of the game was Zoe Saudi with a goal and two assists here tonight. She uh, is a sandwich between Williams and our first star, uh, Kylie Del Rey, who had two goals and two or three goals and two assists here tonight. A whopping five points here tonight for Kylie Del Rey, building and putting her, building on her already impressive season total and catapulting her into the team lead four points here in the wake of tonight's games. On the slate, upcoming for these two teams, they'll be back in action tomorrow at 10.30 with a 10.30 a.m. puck drop here at Martin Ice Arena. We'll, be, we'll have coverage for you right here on CCHN. Matt Ryder will have the call along with our cameraman today, Joel Drucker. Uh, they will be on air tomorrow at roughly 10.30. Taking a look at our light, the lamp. Derek had Kylie Del Rey, and you had Zoe Saudi. Matt? Yeah, I mean, uh, Derek couldn't be here today for today's broadcast, but we talked to him on the phone, and we were like, who do you want for light the lamp? Um, I chose mine first, which is Zoe Saudi. I was conf confident with her that she would have a great game, which she did. But Del Rey, great pick for Derek, had an amazing <laughs> game all over the ice. Like, she just came out with a vengeance tonight. I don't know, maybe someone got her mad or something, or she just wanted to have a great game. But she did, she did her part, and Derek's going to get a lot of points for that. For the light the lamp, so I'm kind of jealous, but <laughs> whatever. Well, you've got plenty of time to catch <laughs> up, Matt. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, before we head out here today, we'd like to thank Joel Drucker, our cameraman here today, for the great work he did, along with Mac TV, for giving us the equipment we used here this afternoon. That'll just about do it for us here this evening, but we'll be right bite right back bright and early tomorrow at 10:30 when the when the Chippewas take on the Falcons for the final time here this weekend until then this is Reagan Cleaves for Matt Ryder and everybody else here at CCHN saying so long from Martin Ice Arena in Mount Pleasant Michigan as the Central Michigan Chippewas bring the pressure to Bowling Green State University and beat them 6 to 1 here at Martin Ice Arena thanks for watching and have a wonderful night everybody